Did you know we are in a new year? In this prophetic podcast, James L. Bugall shares three major points for the Hebraic New Year and has a special surprise guest, Pastor Surpresa from Iris Ministries. Hey, this is James Gall with God Encounters Today podcast, where God encounters are for everyone, and yes, God encounters are especially for you. They really are. Now, in the uh, first podcast of the month, I tend to make it more of a prophetic uh, podcast, and I believe that most of you who follow me, you would know that we have crossed over into a new Hebrew year of 5783. So I would just like to say uh, Happy New Year as we again have crossed over. Now, some of you might not understand uh, some of these uh, dynamics, and that's okay. And that so there is the civil calendar that we live in, and then there is the Hebrew calendar that we celebrate. And actually, God's calendar is the Hebrew calendar. And uh, so we have entered into what's called the 10 days of all, and we'll be coming up on to the most holy day where the priest would go in and minister to the Lord and to the most holy day of Yom Kippur. But that's not my point as much on presenting this podcast with you, although many prophetic people will do a forecasting of things that are to come in the new year. Now, they will often look at the Hebrew symbols and the letters and things of that nature. I don't tend to be one who interprets the lettering and the numbers uh, per se. And that's great that others have that capacity and that is their calling. But that is not as much the skill set that the Lord has given to me. I tend to go by what is the Holy Spirit highlighting to me in Scripture and specifically being a ministry that's called God Encounters Ministries, I being more of a seer type prophet, uh, listen and watch for the dreams that the Lord has given to me. Now, so, hey, let's pray and then we'll jump into this. And by the way, I again am still referring to my newest book, Revival Breakthrough, Preparing for Seasons of Glory, Awakening, and the Great Harvest. So in chapter uh, 10, I believe it is, the theme verse which I'm using for this podcast comes from Jeremiah 33, 3. So I think that works for the year 5783. Okay, Jeremiah 33, 3, where it reads, Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and mighty things which you do not know. Now, the James Gall Amplified Version would insert a word and would say, Call to me, and I, God, will answer you. And I will tell you, another translation will say, and I will show you great and mighty things which you, now here's the word I'm just going to insert, do not yet know, because you're going to know. And there's a word I have for you right now. We are going to call upon the name of the Lord, and he is going to show us things, and he's going to tell us things that we do not yet know, But we're going to know. And in this coming season, and in this new year, it is a time of being drawn into greater intimacy. Of course, every day is. Every year is. But this is a marked time of him calling us to himself. I have a word for us at the very beginning. You know what it is? 
He wants to speak to you. He really, really, really does. One of the words I am seriously carrying right now is, would be concerning the jealousy of God. He wants to meet with you. So I am using this verse, call upon me, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not yet know, but you're going to. If you will carve out the time, if you will press in, and some would say, oh, but James, that's just a religious spirit, and I'm just going to flat out say, no, it's not. It's the Bible. It's God's way. Is it about how much we are reaching up to God? It's really about how God is already reaching down to us, and then we are reaching hold of the God who is already reaching down to us. But it does take this partnership, does it not? Yes, it does. It does, it does, it does. And I'm not going to let go of that. God is requiring of me to, I've been at this for a while. I cannot live on yesterday's bread. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus quotes this on the Sermon on the Mount. And he quotes it from the book of Deuteronomy. And man doesn't live on yesterday's bread. Man doesn't live on yesterday's manna, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Oh, my goodness. So, anyway, call unto me, and I will show you great and mighty things which you do not yet know. Now, I've got some surprises. So, this broadcast is actually about the new year and God surprises. The new year and God surprises. So, number one, I want you to know this. God wants to speak to you. And you say, well, that's pretty generic. It's pretty awesome. And he is waiting on you to come to him because he wants to meet with you. He really does. Number two, I want to say to you, I want to say this. God has some surprises in store. Really? Absolutely. God's got some surprises in store just for you. They're for you. Yeah, they're for your neighbor. Yeah, they're for your brother or your sister. Yeah, they're for your your friend. But they're for you. And these surprises are for you. Hold that one. But I am... I'm serious about this. God's got some surprises. Now, I'm going to blow your circuits just for a moment, and I'm going to tell you a God dream I had on Rosh Hashanah. Actually, three of them again. You know, if you followed me recently, I've been having these triad dreams, three dreams in a night. Well, it's happened again, and it happened on the first day of the new year on Rosh Hashanah. And I can't take the time to unfold these these complete dreams. It just... I don't have enough time to do that. But listen to this. This crazy dream on Rosh Hashanah. I'm the only one that's in this dream. And on dream interpretation, the first question you ask is, where are you in the dream? Are you the central figure? Are you in the dream and observing? Are you not in the dream and you're simply watching? Well, I was a central figure in this dream, so go figure. No. Anyway, but in the dream... My left arm, my left arm, an arm is A-R-M, Apostolic Restoration Ministries, and like, is the arm of the Lord too short from Isaiah and things of that nature? But in my left arm, a banana, of all things, grows out of my my left arm. And you say, well, that's kind of crazy. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking in the dream. And then a voice, which I don't know, whose voice it was. So let's just say it was a voice from God. In the dream says to me, James, the older you get, the more like Bob Jones you're becoming. 
Now, some of you don't know who that was, and Bob Jones was one of my mentors in the prophetic, and a pretty profound seer, I use the word parabolic prophet. And of all things, in this dream, it's a parable, and a banana is has grown out of my left arm. And then my voice seems to shift, and I sound somewhat like Paul Kane. And I am doing humor, and I don't do humor. Now, some of my other prophetic friends are really great at telling jokes and are very humorous in their presentations. I'm really not known for that. I'm more the Jeremiah weeping prophet person. Okay, let's get move on with it. So, in the dream, I am like on Rosh Hashanah. All it is, I'm just there. <laughs> my left arm, a banana grows out of my left arm. A voice from the Lord says, the older you get, the more like Bob Jones you're becoming. And then I, off the cuff, kind of say, says, yeah, that would be really appealing. Listen to this. I wake up out of the dream. I go into my kitchen to let my dog Destiny outdoors. And sitting on my kitchen counter is literally a singular banana. I'm talking in the natural. There is a ripe banana sitting on my kitchen counter that was not there before. Now, if I have bananas, they sit in a basket next to my coffee machine. This banana, there were no bananas in my house when I went to bed. This banana literally is sitting on my kitchen counter. So that's like, okay, the Lord's talking about something. I actually go back to bed, and I have two more dreams about different fruits growing out of my left arm. Now, I've been in a season where I wasn't feeling like I was being the most fruitful, even though I've been doing my online classes, even though I've released another new book, and even though I've got new music that's coming out soon, etc., and I've been touching people and things of this nature, but I haven't been able to travel and things of this nature and all that, and I just, I just, you know, sometimes we struggle, and I just haven't felt, felt, did you hear that word? And in this dream, the Holy Spirit personally encourages me, you're being fruitful. Now, but I want to interpret this in a different way. And I want to say, one, God wants to meet with you. Two, God's got some surprises. And number three, we are moving into a season of accelerated growth and where the arm of the Lord will not be too short. And guess what? We are moving into a period of time of accelerated growth and fruitfulness. And it will be appealing. And it's not going to be any monkey business. And it's going to be appealing. And there will be supernatural confirmations and supernatural signs. So hold on. Now, wait just a second. Hold on because I've got a surprise because I have a friend who has come to visit. And so we're going to take a moment now to hear from a friend of 20 years named Pastor Surprise. So here he is. Hey, this is James Gall, and uh, in my home uh, with a friend. And I'm going to give a little background on this. In the summer, I think it was, or in the spring, whatever, of 2002. 2002, yes. The Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, keep the month of October free or with flexibility because there's a surprise coming your way. Now, I had cancer 
non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer. And he said, there will be a surprise that's coming your way. Well, there was a surprise. And there was a prayer time that was set up for me at a church that we were a part of in Franklin, Tennessee. And little did I know that I did not know this man from South Africa, who's a part of Iris Ministries. And yes. sometimes people refer to him as Pastor Surprise. Surpresa is actually his name. So in my home today in Franklin, Tennessee, almost 20 yes. years later, and I'm also been in another time of need. I get to welcome in my home a surprise, Pastor Surpresa. Yeah. Do you remember that time? I remember, I remember very well. So what do you remember? I remember um, September, oh, October 2000. And to 7 October. October 7th, 2002. 2002. Mm -hmm. Coming, walking to Franklin, Tennessee mm -hmm. at the Grace Center. Yeah. And at that time, the pastor was Brian Smallwood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he set up the meeting. That time we were having uh, the soaking service. Right. And then we prayed. Right. And one of the things that was so distinct that I remember... I had a, I would call it an invitation, a visitation of the man of fire, Christ Jesus. And he invited me to step okay. into the vision of the man of fire. And as I did, and you were praying for me. Exactly, I remember. Yeah, go ahead. You pick it up. And then there was intense fire at that point. And uh, together we found well, we were just on the ground, yeah. there, and the fire of God was so the heat, yeah. and actually we were sweating the whole body. <laughs> my whole body start, my body started sweating in the fire of God, yeah. and it started actually going through my bloodstream, and then the presence of God would sit, yeah, over different organs and just I mean, rest there. Yes. Anyway, it was an amazing encounter, and so. This gentleman is integral in South Africa. Yes, yes. And yes. so tell us a little bit. Give us an update. Well, the, I live in Nelspreet, actually. Nelspreet mm -hmm. is a town 30 kilometers to, to the park, Kruger National Park. To so, the Kruger National Park. That's Kruger it. National Park is where I'm settled. and uh, Amazing. So you can just drive 30 minutes to the park. We have a churches around there, and I'm um, pastoring two churches, one in the city of Nelspreet, another one at the village, and so forth and so on. And this week, I have this privilege, special to be inside your house 20 <laughs> yeah, years but, later. Yeah, and then you're obviously a part of Iris Global with Roland and Heidi Baker. Roland and Heidi Baker and Will Hart and the whole team yeah. of Iris Global, we are working together, yes. One of the things that's just interesting to me is that, you know, I have these dreams. And one of the dreams that I just had was about uh, these black and white discs. And they were all out on this table. And they seemed to be in, like, disconnected. Now, we've not been together yeah. for a long time. A long time, yeah. I remember, yes. And... But in this dream, these discs were all over the table and they were black and they were white. And this is not planned even in our wardrobe today, <laughs> okay? And obviously he's pretty black and I'm pretty white. Yeah. And, uh, and in this dream though, they were all placed out all over this table and they were disconnected. And then this supernatural dimension happens. And then at the end of the dream, that which was disconnected is either reconnected or becomes connected. And the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And it was the third dream of that night. And he said to me, it's time to connect the dots. 
Oh yeah. I'm going to connect the dots and people are going to, people who have not felt like that they have a family, people who do not feel like that they belong and they're on the outside looking in. He told me this, the Holy Spirit did, people will find their tribe. And I think it's fascinating that on the heels of that, yeah. black and white, God's flip, flipping some things, perhaps. And we find our tribe. tribe. Yes. Every kindred, a people of every Amen. kindred, every family, and every tribe. Every tribe. It's not supposed to only be in heaven. We're to find each other on earth in celebrating Amen. the one man Christ Jesus. What do you Hallelujah. think? What do you think about uh, I'm that? I'm so celebrating now. I'm completely celebrating <laughs> at this time. It's so such amazing, amazing. Indeed, the time of connecting the dot has come. Good. Thank you. What what other word might you have bubbling up inside of you that you would like to share? What is bubbling me is that there have been baby people out there that they have been just gleaning from behind like Ruth. Hmm. Gleaning and gleaning and gleaning. But I'm hearing this word of the time of gleaning is over. Now they're going to master the field. They're going to master the field. Yeah. So I would say something like this. The time of the great harvest has begun. Amen. Amen. You, you connected it, the dot right there. Let's say it together. Yes. The time, the time of, the of the great, great harvest, harvest has come. begun. It begun. has come. Yeah. The time of the great harvest, harvest. Has begun. It has begun. And it has begun not just for us. When we yeah. agree yes. together. Yes. And the dots connect. Connects. The time of the great, great harvest, harvest has, has begun, begun. for yeah. you too. Well, this is James Gall with God Encounters Ministries, and this is a Surprise Itola Irish Ministries. And we agree, agree. together the that the time, time of the of great, great harvest, harvest has begun. begun. Amen. God bless Amen. you. God bless you. Hey, I hope that you appreciated that little interaction that I just had with my friend of over 20 years, of Pastor Sapreza Sitol from uh, Mo South Africa, who is a part of the Global Iris Ministry team. And he is such a delight. Now, I want to get back to the issue in Revival Breakthrough, which, believe me, Pastor Sapreza is a major apostolic restoration ministry leader who is extremely fruitful. Now, are all the fruits good? Once it's generally established that a practice or an experience is biblical, it may seem not to be clear whether a particular experience is actually from God. That is why the Bible puts forward other tests. Ultimately, we must ask the question regarding any manifestation or phenomenon. Is there good fruit? Good fruit. I just thought I would bring this in to us from chapter 10. In relation to it, Jesus said the following about, about this. He said, quoting Matthew chapter 7, verses 17 and 20. Every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree eventually, eventually bears bad fruit. So then you will know them by their fruits. Well, it's time for us to bear supernatural good fruit. And he is going to help us in doing that. Because call upon him and he will show us great and mighty things. Which you do not yet know, but you're going to know. And he is jealous for you. 
and he really wants to draw near. There are surprises that are coming, and we are moving into a time of accelerated growth. Let's pray together. Father, in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus, we want more of your amazing presence in our lives, our families, and our cities. And we welcome uh, manifestations and the phenomenon of the Holy Spirit's power. And we welcome the gifts, and we welcome the fire, and we welcome the wind, and we welcome the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We desire the wisdom and the truth that come from the combined revelation of your word and your spirit. So help us to learn from the past outpourings of revivals, while at the same time not building monuments to them. We want to bear good fruit, spiritual fruit, and we want to bring glory to your name. Send revival now. For Jesus Christ's sake, amen and amen. This is James Gall. I'd love for you to get my new book, Revival Breakthrough. And God encounters are for everyone. And yes, God encounters are especially for you. They really are. God bless you. Good to be with you. Get ready for a powerful supernatural journey. Revival is coming. Do you want to be a part of Seasons of Glory, Awakening, and the Great Harvest? James W. Gall's book, Revival Breakthrough, takes us on a journey towards an unprecedented outpouring of God's Spirit. Get Revival Breakthrough today at jamesgall.com.